Hey everybody, it's Mike with Monkey Fab. Uh, today we're going to do an update on the Phoenix and where we're at and what we got going on, etc. We actually had it out of off the rack and out of the garage the other day. Uh, and I'll probably drop some of that footage here. Drop it here now. Okay, here's a shot of something we haven't seen in a long time. Right, Monkey? Woo! Woo! <laughs> so my buddy Jacob has been doing um, all my wiring, uh, the AC system. He's gonna figure out the computer and all of that, which is fabulous because I hate wiring. I hate computers. Um, and I don't know anything about air conditioning or heating. Uh, we got him ballparked. He went in there and just finished it all off uh, for the most part. But I also had the microphone messed up for a few days, so I'm not sure if I got any of that footage. But uh, yeah, we did the, the little fancy manifold down there. She is, she looks pretty good. It's not bad, it's not bad. Can't really see anything. But uh, yeah, we got it put in there where all the spark plugs and the spark plug wires all have tons of clearance, which is good. Um, what doesn't have tons of clearance is the wires that go to the crank angle sensor and the starter, uh, but no worse than stock manifolds. I just don't like how tight that is back there to begin with. The um, transmission cooler lines are going to have to be ran a little bit funny. I'm going to have to figure that out. They might have to come up and kind of do one of these over things kind of like what's happening with the air conditioning and the heating and cooling lines. But you'll see there's massive space between all the hot stuff and the hot stuff and the hot and cold stuff, I guess. Uh, the, like I said, the fuel lines ran. We have uh, 120 pound Holly injectors in this guy. And what we're gonna do is just take off this Schrader valve right now and I have a fitting that will step this up from a dash four to a dash six. And then we'll just run a, six, a 96 right over to, we'll, we'll hang our return uh, regulator right around here somewhere and run it down out, out through the fender and back along there. So, and I need to finish this guy. But this is the old one that was on the other side and I can keep, I can keep most of this. I just need to make some adjustments to go to that, to go back down to the intercooler. We got the uh, studs in there. Got those on my website. If you guys would rather mess with studs than getting bolts cross-threaded, if you have the room, then they're a great option. Another top tip. Whilst, whilst working with manifolds, and if you have access to a belt sander or something to surface with, always surface these guys. I uh, pulled this guy out, and you could just tell by the old uh, carbon buildup that was on here. This guy had a bit of a leak coming through here. Did I show that right? I didn't. So it just had a little bit of a leak showing through there. But once you uh, get it to where you have nice silvery all the way around the port, then you can know that you're pretty well sure you're going to have a nice seal on the head. Yeah. So once you get it all nice and silvery like this around every hole, then you know it's going to seal nice on the head. And always before you start fabricating, you just put all the gaskets in place that you're going to use. So I went ahead and put the gasket in there and uh, we're going to throw that in there and start measuring for our little DB our little doo -doo 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 bits to make the uh, crossover pipe. Mowing. <laughs> Bam! So there we go. Fits much better because before it was like kind of crooked and didn't really fit the... See how the throttle body kind of points up? Thank you, GM. But uh, yeah, that little zippity-do did a good job. And you guys can see... Oh! Come on, like Just... Just, no, it doesn't want to work that way. See these beads, these billet beads work so good. It almost makes it impossible to take off the, uh, the silicone. But yeah, that's just how they go on. You just weld them 
on the inside boys like that and uh, they're real simple and it keeps your silicone obviously from shooting off once we get the little clampy boys in you'll see it's got a nice it's probably it's probably a quarter inch you know when you consider that each side is about an eighth so you get a good grippy boy on there and uh yeah so on to the next project i think we're gonna tighten up these uh ret return fuel ones i'm just not sure where i left out the last update but i think it was a pipe yeah we got the pipe done and now we got the fuel return done so what i did do is i had a three bar boy and we were going off this front line and just kind of trying to figure out where to put the three bar but i have a two and a half this is basically stock off of anything that's like a uh, gen 4 ls of course <laughs> the sensor for the map on the holly is for gen 1 so it doesn't fit so i had to buy an adapter which is fine because it, it's kind of tight and the adapter is like six inches so that should give us the space that we need in order to uh, get that which that should be fine it's two and a half bar i'll have to look it up to see like how many pounds of boost that registers um but as long as it's like uh so what's a half bar? A half bar is like seven PSI. So a full bar is like 14 to 28 and then a half would be like way. <laughs> but one of those is negative, right? So, uh, okay, so we're going negative uh, one atmosphere and then positive and then plus seven. So that's like four and seven is 21. That's way more than one. So, so I think that a two and a half bar will read about 21 ish pounds and we're only going to be using like 14, 16 ish. I don't only want to run one bar. So let me say one bar. It's more than we'll ever need with this car and this combo. Trust me and what it makes is what it makes i don't really care um but if it spikes or whatever you want to be able to see that obviously which you will so we'll set the boost cut for like 18 pounds and then we'll know we won't get in trouble right so uh fuel return is all good look he's graced us with his presence you guys haven't seen the follow-up i got bob i got this mountain dew colored monkey fab Moo Moo, show the people your mullet, Bob. Give them a profile. No, the other profile. Look that way. Bob, don't act like you don't understand. Okay, whatever. You're so hard-headed. You're so hard-headed, Bob. Does he look sharp? Show, show the people your mullet, Bob. Bob, are you supposed to be in the garage? Huh? Go, 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 go. Oh, whoop your ass, go. get a whoop bob's ass every once in a while all right we have the transmissions lines they look like they're gonna work i'm just gonna run them over here so you know like anytime you retrofit anything into another car nothing's landing where the hell i want it to be and there's trust troubles with everything <laughs> but that's okay that's 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 part of the game my biggest uh i'm not super happy with is that that line right down here it's real close to the wastegate so I think what I'm gonna do I know this sounds crazy but I think since that wastegate is water coolable I think I'm gonna water cool it I'm gonna run a little T in off of the uh, heater lines or the water pump lines or or I don't know we'll figure out something but I think we'll definitely run some water lines to that and that'll help keep it cool and then we'll heat wrap the uh line like usual um it's like packing a duffel bag you guys ever pack a duffel bag where you start and you think oh i only got so much space and you roll everything super tight and you pack it in there and then you're about three quarters of the way through and you're like oh my god i still have half a pack so you just start dumping shit in but as soon as you do that you're just completely out of space that's how this is it starts with the best of intentions all I cared about was to make sure my spark plug wires weren't even close to the manifold, and they're not. But there's other things close to things, and some things you just can't avoid, I guess. But uh, yeah, so we got the two line, the return, we got the uh, turbo all locked in place. The 
oil cooler or the transmission cooler lines i need to get a 90 and figure out how to connect them to the actual transmission so they're not connected i just want to know if i had enough room and if this is going to work but i think that works it keeps it up and away from all the exhaust pipe so i think i'm going to call it a night we got some good good working on the uh on the phoenix uh this is mike with monkey fab oh we got ghosts be sure to go to monkeyfabgarage.com and uh, check out all of our little turbo goodies everything we're using we're pretty much having stock so uh and we've done a really good job of staying keeping things in stock although it's been super hard to do so thanks for dropping by checking out monkey fab garage be sure to check out the website it is monkeyfabgarage.com for all your turbo needs and until next time this is mike monkey fab signing out